of great authority, and it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And what blessed me about what you inspired in me as you were sharing was that it just reminds me of Hebrews 11, 1, where it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What does that mean? So faith is the guarantee that what you desire is already yours. So there's a saying, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. And so visualization is very great. Like God gives us vision. He gives us his direction. And this vision is revelation, where there is no vision or revelation. The people wander aimlessly. And so the revelation that God gives us is his heavenly words, the direction to follow. Like in Habakkuk 2.2, for an example, it says, write the vision, the revelation, make it plain that he that reads it may run to do it. So God will put in your heart his desires and you can write them down. You can make them goals. You can make them your desires and your goals, what God's working in you. And as you do that, you'll see it come to pass. And God taught me this going back in 2000, November the 24th, 2019. And God put in my heart to write my, to write the vision, make it plain, that he that readeth may run to do it. And I'm like, what does that mean, God? We said, well, you're going to read the vision, right? You're the one that's going to read it. You're the one that's writing it. I'll give you what to write. And one of the first things God asked me was, how much do you want to honor me with, right? And so I'm thinking about this, and I had a, an amount. And God says, write it down. Two days later, he asked, how much do you want to have left over at the end of each month? And so I got that. I wrote it down. What are your other desires? I want to see God's word move in all of the UK, in all of the Europe, because that's what was prophesied to me twice by two different people. That's what I'd be doing. And also other goals. And so I was writing this all down. And I still got it written down in a PDF and a Word document. And I read it. And I thank God it's already done. So the, the scriptures also say a lot about imagination. So in Isaiah 26, it says, Thou, God, will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed focused on thee because he trusteth in thee so basically god is saying if you trust me you're going to keep your eyes focused on me how do you keep your eyes focused on an invisible god it's through the heavenly words it's through the encouragement and this word mind if you used to look it up in the hebrew means it's, it's the greek it's the hebrew word called yatsa and it means imagination and frame so basically what you put in a frame you put a picture what do words paint words paint pictures so the things that you desire, you speak, you see it in your mind. And if you were to all close your eyes now, I'm going to say to you, a white rabbit. You'll get kind of like an, some kind of image of a white rabbit. Okay, now a white Alsatian dog. Pretty distinct. All right. Um, okay, a, a beautiful brown owl. Now a snowy colored owl. And you get these pictures, so words paint pictures. So it shows us the words from God, like the words energized by God in our hearts to speak forth now, will build a picture in your heart and mind. It will give you a vision. It will give you a direction. And you can have them in your heart, and you can also write them down, and you can tick them off as they come to pass, because it will surely come to pass. And so you can have whatsoever you desire, but it all depends what you're imagining what are you imagining you can have fear no words can build fear oh i can't pay the rent the economy's going bust the world's in terrible trouble how am i going to feed the kids how am i going to pay the bills how am i going to have a holiday how am i going to do anything how are we going to survive how are we going to pay the rent how are we going to keep this house over our head this roof over our head <clears throat> but those words paint what fear pictures of fear pictures of doom pictures of failure but the heavenly words also give us hope you know god is a god of hope he's a god of this word hope is expectation with joy so we can expect from god with joy whatever god says he's gonna do he will do and when we hold to that and keep it in our hearts and keep that in our minds then we can claim those great and precious promises of God. We speak it, we confess. So not only do we have to hold the image in our mind, but we also have to speak accordingly to it. So there's a twofold thing going on. What as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What you're thinking, how you think you're going to be, how you think you're going to turn out is what you will be. 
It's God designed it. It's a God design. It's not the law of attraction design. This is a God design. He set this up. He set up all the laws and all the principles, what governs the earth, what helps us to live and move. And God has given us the faith of Jesus Christ. OK, so we can believe for the very best. When Jesus Christ was crucified, when he was whipped, be beaten, he, he gave up the, the spirit of God. He gave up his breath life. He had to give it up. No one could take it away from him. He'd done it in obedience. When God raised him from the dead and then we received Holy Spirit, we got newness of life. We're not in the old nature like Carl Morton shared at the beginning. We're, we're not dead. We are alive now. We're dead to ourselves, but alive unto God through Christ. So everything that God has made available to us is ours. So God says you freely received, you know, so that you can freely enjoy. God, Jesus Christ became poor, so we become we could become rich. So the first place we become rich is not in our bank accounts, it's in our hearts. God says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and being health, even as our soul prospers. What is your soul? Your soul is your will, your mind, your emotion, your intellect. It's what makes you you. You live and move and have your being. So how do you prosper there? It's through the heavenly words from God. It's through all these great and precious promises of who God says you are now. Your sons of God. The scriptures say, as he is, Jesus, as he is, not as he was. But as he is right now at the right hand side of God, so are you and him. So you are very prosperous, right? You are very spiritually, you're very prosperous. If you want to see the impossible, you've got to see it in the invisible. Everything that Jesus Christ made available is in the spiritual. So how do we get what's in the spiritual into our physical? It's by knowing these things, knowing who we are and saying what God says. So we changed the old paradigm, the old programming, the things that we learned when we grew up, the things that the world has shoved down our throat. Maybe our parents, maybe our auntie and uncles, maybe our friends, our school friends, what we learned at school. School never teaches you to be prosperous. School just gets you to answer questions. And there's people that can remember questions really good. And there's people that can't remember questions, right? The only thing that makes you prosperous is God. And he, he gives you what to do. So we can have knowledge. So we can have knowledge of the scripture. I've got lots of knowledge of the scripture. But it doesn't mean I'm living it. It doesn't mean I'm understanding it. It doesn't mean I'm doing it. I can speak realms of things, right? Uh, so could Carl Morton. So can many people on there that have had our kind of background. But God is the one that uh, is educating us. And even with what we're learning from what I'm sharing now, if you're receiving these words and taking them to your heart, you can get very blessed. You can have a knowledge of what I'm saying, but to manifest it, you need to do it. And it says in the scriptures that we are to receive the word with meekness. We're to be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving our own self. Many wonderful believers are hearers of the word. Oh, I know that. So they automatically think they're doing it. They automatically think they're living it. And they might be doing some of those things. But if you really want to prosper, it says now you are... And I've like I shared this in America, you are not a full focus. You're a Lamborghini. You've got a Lamborghini engine in you, a Holy Spirit Lamborghini engine. You're a jet plane. You can really move with God. So it's up to you. Do you want to go by tradition and what man is telling you about what you should believe and what God is supposed to be saying? Or are you going to let God direct you? Because each one of us can be led by the Spirit of God. In Romans 8 14, it says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So for me, where I connect, I get given the fresh bread, the heavenly bread, the manna from heaven. So I'm I'm just encouraged with wonderful words. And those words I receive, I don't receive them as the words of my minister. I receive them as the words of God. And it becomes effective in me because as it's the words of God, I need to pay attention. I need to put it into action into my life. And as I'm putting it into action, I start to see wonderful results. As I start to say what God says, I change the old programming inside of me because it's dead anyway. Everything inside of you, the old nature, everything to do with the flesh is dead. We're the ones that are keeping it alive when it's dead. You know, we're carrying around with us. So you got the mind of Christ now. So you can think heavenly thoughts. You can speak heavenly words. 
you can be led by God. Jesus Christ was led by God. He didn't carry scrolls around with him. He didn't carry any Bible around with him, but he carried around the Holy Spirit. And he always done what the Father put in his heart to do. He always spoke what the Heavenly Father gave him to speak. So you can have what you desire. God says he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think. He wants you to have a high level of expectation. Religion will kind of put you down in a sense or discourage you because, or oh, you need to do this, you're sinning brother, or you've done the wrong thing. Any discouragement does not come from the one true living God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It doesn't come from him. He remembers that we're dust. He knows our time is short on this earth. He wants us to enjoy everything he's made available. It's like him putting on a big banquet, but we never come to the table to eat. God says, now, look, I put this big banquet for you to enjoy this life and live in, to bring glory to me. The way you bring glory to me is to live your life unto me, is to enjoy everything that I've given you, to walk in your authority, to walk in your power, into his power. And you've got great authority. You can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. You can cleanse the lepers. You can tell devil spirits to leave you alone. If you're finding it tough, if you're getting, the, if you're walking with God and there's things going on, you tell those spirits to back off. You are seated at the right hand side of God in Christ Jesus. You've got great authority <laughs> and you're speaking from the mouth of God because you're seated at his right hand. What you say goes. And that goes for unbelievers too. What they say goes. What your, your words will come to pass, whatever you're saying, negative or positive. Oh, I've never got enough money. No good lucky breaks come for me. Everybody else seems to get the great things. I never get them. It'll stay that way. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Your words are seed. Your words are seed. Where does fruit come from? A seed. So what you're speaking is what you're planting is what you're going to reap. It says in the scriptures, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. If we sow to the flesh, we will reap the corruption of that. If we spoke sow to the spirit, we will reap the life, the benefits of God. See, God gives us benefits only. It's not, he doesn't give us consequences. Consequences come from the old nature, the God of this world. He's always trying to trick us out. If we're not walking with God, he can trick you out. He can even trick you out for a Bible teacher. <laughs> you know, we've been there. We've been it. We've done it. We wore the T-shirt. And uh, But God really wants you to enjoy this heavenly way. The heavenly way is what God is showing you. And so visualization is very big. And God gives you words which builds the vision. So, yeah, there's certain things like uh, visualizing a rabbit or visualizing abundance in your bank account, visualizing good health, visualizing great outreach. My my focus is to see many fellowships from this fellowship rise up. And then my desire is to work with the leaders, is to encourage people to really connect and go to God, to follow the encouragement being given. And it's a free will choice. You decide. No one's making you do. No one's making me do what I'm doing. No one's making me do the Zoom fellowship. I desire to do it. It's a pleasure to do it. It's a pleasure to wake up and pray and then pray in the answer. You've got to see that you've already got it. Like you were saying, Theodore, bless me a lot. And um, Sylvia, you know, you've got to see that you've already got it. And I'll read you a record that Jesus said. So we all believe Jesus, right? We all believe in what our Lord and Savior said. So what did he say? Mark 11. So Jesus Christ was walking past a fig tree and he cursed this fig tree because it wasn't fruitful. Doesn't that tell you something? We want to be meat for the master's use. We want to be fruitful. God wants you to be fruitful uh, with your walk and your relationship with him first. Uh Fruitful in your outreach, fruitful in your body, fruitful in your finances, fruitful with your children, fruitful with the relationships you've got. He wants you to stand out. If you look at Noah in his day and time, he stood out. 
he was a preacher of righteousness. No one believed him, but he still stayed with God and he'd done what God wanted him to do. And God saved his whole house because of him, because of his faithfulness. Abraham had to believe the promises of God. And God said, you're going to be a daddy, like at his old age. But Abraham, God worked with his faith, giving him good words, fair speech, like God's spoken fair speech into our lives. And so the heavenly words built his faith to the point that he become fully persuaded that what God said he's going to do, he was going to do. And because he come fully persuaded, God was able to execute everything. <laughs> so we have to be fully persuaded of what we're praying for, what we're believing for and the direction we're going for. And we can't fear other people's faces. The only thing that stop you is fear or other people, what other people are saying or tradition, religion. Or, you know, doing it a certain way. The traditions of God make make none of the traditions of man make none affect the power of God. So we got to be bold in this day and time. And God is raising up people that are going to walk with him powerfully, that are not going to bow to anybody else if they don't agree with you. There's lots of people that don't agree with me. Do I care? No. Am I seeing results from what I'm sharing and doing? Yes. So that's an indication to me I'm moving in the right direction. Like I've said, first time in my life I know I'm in the right direction. And God is um, giving me confirmation of all these things that I'm doing and that he's putting in my heart to do. And so I connect to my leader. My leader's not saying, Lawrence, you need to do this, you need to do that. He's just giving me encouragement. I'm sharing what's going on in my life. This is what God's working in my heart, my life. This is what I'm doing. And then God will energize certain things in, in him to say, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna run with that. That was great what he said. I'm ready to receive. You've got to be ready to receive. The first place is a humble heart. I'm ready to receive. And then just go and do it. When you put it into practice, you will start to receive results, like with honoring God with your finances. When you start to do it with God, you start to see results. There's lots of people on here that can testify when they come to me, they want honoring God. Now they're prospering because they just received my words as the words of God, not the words of Lawrence. We've got to take the faces out of it. See, like this, and the hand of God. <laughs> so anyway, Jesus Christ spoke to the fig tree. He spoke to a tree. Was he mad? No, he knew how things worked. He knew his authority. He knew who he was. And we can do the same. And it says there, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God or have the faith of God, that translation could be. So he's, they, they seen him speak to this tree and then Peter reminded him, master, the tree that you curse has died backwards, basically. He says, have the faith of God. And he says, for truly I say unto you that whosoever, now that's what category of people is that? Whosoever. Unbelievers, their words work the same. But our words are a bit different because we've got the heavenly words, right? So it says, I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, this problem, this situation, this difficulty, right? Whatever your situation is, speak to it. Tell it what you want it to do. And so God can inspire you with what to say. He can give you the picture and the vision of what you desire. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain or problem, be, listen to the word, he says, be thou removed, a command, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, no doubts, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I am prosperous. I am successful. I am moving the word in all of the United Kingdom, the whole of Europe and USA and other parts of the world. God has opened up great doors for me. I have the top quality laborers in the world. The only the best come to me. I am a magnet to laborers. I'm a magnet to blessings. I'm a magnet to the goodness of God. And it comes to me. I am a magnet to these things. And it's it comes to me. And you can call things, and I'll show you. So it says here, 24. Therefore, I say unto you, this is what Jesus was saying to his disciples, what things soever you desire. And this word desire can also mean, you can look at the word, the Greek word, it means call for. What sort of things you call for when you pray? Believe that you receive them. You've got to believe you already got it. And you shall have them. 
if you see it off in the distance, it's never going to come to you. Oh, it may turn up tomorrow or maybe next week. God is faithful. Maybe the week are. No, it's already yours. The time of waiting doesn't matter because you, you've already got trust and confidence in God. He's delivered. And so it's just like, you know, when we're waiting for a letter, Theodore, send me a letter. Lawrence, I sent you a letter. I know I'm going to get a letter because he sent it to me. I don't question it. It might be delayed, but it's going to come. So what is your desire? This is the big thing. What do you desire in your life? What direction do you want to move? What has God put in your heart? Listen, this is a personal relationship with God. You're, this, I'm talking to you all individually, even though there's a group of you, right? What has God called you to do? Because you can do it. You can do all things through Christ because God is energizing that in you. You want to be prosperous? You can be. God shows you what to do to be prosperous financially. God shows you what to do to have many laborers, which is also connected to your finances. God shows you how to abound to every good work. It starts with the finances. Don't believe me? Okay, we go to the Bible. God says that he'll multiply your seed sown. He'll increase the fruits of your righteousness. You're already righteous. So what does that mean? The works of righteousness, which is healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, getting people to come from darkness to light, word and ministry of reconciliation. It calls you to abound to every good work. What we try and do is cut corners. We try and get our own abundance. We try and make our own way for finances. But we just got to do one thing, honor God with our heart. In Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Then it goes on to say, honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty. See, God's a loving God. He's telling you what to do. Oh, you want you want to prosper? Okay, this is what you do. When there was a famine in the land, everyone was going to Egypt. But God said to Isaac, you sow in this famine land. And because he listened to God and he done what God told him to do, he sowed where God showed him to sow. God multiplied every little seed he sown a hundred times and he became very wealthy. Why did God not just answer Solomon's prayer and give him wisdom? God didn't even only do that. He gave him great riches because this is God's heart. He wants us to, if we got a poverty mindset, that's how you're thinking. And you can't see above that. You need to ask God to enlarge your vision on your finances, enlarge your vision on your increase. If your fellowships are small, or if only if it's only been you or a couple of people, ask God to enlarge your vision. Father, I desire to do your work. Father, I desire to live unto you. You know, and then go God's way. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. The things I'm sharing, I've proven for me and I've got the fruit. Now I've shared it with other people and those that have practiced it have proven it for themselves. So they know that it's not Lawrence. Lawrence is just a mouthpiece. Lawrence is a vehicle of communication for God. Lawrence is someone that submitted himself unto God with a desire to help other people. That's all my heart is, is to help other people and to do the will of God from the heart. But it's time that we get bold, you know, and start speaking these truths because this is what's going to release God's people from bondage. God doesn't want you in physical bondage. He doesn't want you in financial bondage. But when you try and make it on your own, you'll fail miserably. You might get some money coming. You might even get a lot of money coming, but you'll be unhappy in some other area. But God is a complete God. And, you know, we are complete in Christ. He wants you happy in every single area of your life and your living. But it really blessed me what you shared about these things, because if you want to do the impossible, you've got to see it in the invisible first. Faith is what you see up here. And then you confess and then you say it's already yours. That's how we pray. Father, I thank you. This is done. So uh, we had a great time in USA. And yesterday we had to arrange for our flights to India and Nepal. <laughs> and we was due to leave on the 27th of October, come back 15th of November. And I said to Kim, you know, I want really good flights here. And so we're looking at all these flights going out on the 27th. 
and uh, and the times were not very good. The price was ridiculous. And so Kim and Amber were on the website. I was with them, but they were kind of doing all the work, really. And Kim said, well, look, it's a, it's, it's like a grand, a thousand pound cheaper to go in the day before. And I'm thinking, well, Sandgate set this day, blah, blah, blah. But I had to make up my mind very quickly because the flights of what we wanted, the seats that we wanted, were going. There was only two left. So I said, go for it. So we went for these flights. We blocked these flights in. So it meant we was going a day earlier. So I then I had to call Sandgate. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't know what he's going to say about this. But I said, oh, we've had to go earlier because it's cheaper, number one. And we got really good seats at a very good price. And we saved ourselves a lot of money. You know, all of us, Danny, Amber, and Helen as well. And so he said, oh, that's great. You come. You'll have a day to relax. Go for a massage. Just chill. You know, you'll be all ready for when we come as well. And he said, I'll ring the hotel for you. Make sure someone comes to pick you up. <laughs> so God just, we got to move in faith. We move with faith. And sometimes we might think someone may not like it. But if we're being directed by God, not only will it work out the other end but there be the 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 benefits and blessings of that so all praise to god he is working and i would encourage people to continue as we've been encouraging just continue with the encouragement that you've been given with unto god like you're doing it not unto lar or unto kim you're doing it unto god and that's our job we're just to proclaim these things and so the things that i've been fed i've done and I've seen the wonderful benefits from my wonderful minister that walks with God. And now I'm able to do this also. He's just encouraged, yes, you can do. He's never given me one negative thing. Not one negative word has come out of that man's mouth to me. And he's just lovingly encouraged me. And I run with that. Everyone runs with encouragement. If I say, oh, Carl Morton, you need to sharpen up in this area. Fear it all, you're this. You're thinking, who the hell's this guy like, you know? People don't respond to that. People respond to love and encouragement with a precise direction. And so this is what we've, we've been giving people as precise direction, things to practice. So like speaking in tongues, honoring God, staying connected, speaking by the spirit. And when people just begin to practice, they become stronger in it and stronger and stronger. And they're walking on their own, man. Like they're starting fellowships, things are happening. And uh, and so this is it. Like, so if you want to move forward, this is how to move forward. And so these things I've been repeating and repeating, actually. But uh, again, I wasn't even going to share that. But because of what you shared, it really kind of triggered in me this um, part about visualization because it's there. God set it up. God set up seed time and harvest, day and night, summer and winter. These things won't change. He set up the law of faith, the our confessions. <laughs> God set up many laws and principles that govern everything. And when we operate within them as God is directing us from a free heart, then we start to see the wonderful benefits and it happens quickly. Things start to change very quickly. It shouldn't take many years. Three years I've been practicing this way, three and a half years. But within the first years, things change very dynamically. So I just encourage you to go to God, just stay practicing, stay focused, connect where you're going to get fed, the right sound word. The sound doctrine is what God gives. The heavenly words. Connect where you're going to get fed. And then I would say to you, receive it and just go and do it. What you understand to do from that. So if what I've shared tonight would be hitting people in different ways and encourage them in different ways. And if they go and do it, they'll get blessed. Or some people think, well, I've heard this before. He says the same old thing. There's a reason for it. Ask yourself. And the thing I finish up with now is like, be not weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you faint not. You may have been practicing, and at the moment you're not seeing the results you so desire. But God says, be not weary in well-doing. God is faithful, and God is your sufficiency, not your job, not anything else. He's the, he supplies the job. He supplies these things, but he's the source of your supply. So just remember, God is the source of your supply in every area of life and living so go to him with all your heart and just and start declaring that you've already got it start speaking like i wake up i am blessed i am the lender not the borrower i'm the head and not the town i've become those things it works because god set it up and he gives and he, he enlightens you this understanding so anyway that's what i want to share <laughs>